to dive in deeper in soaring color and perhaps spiritual principles. Siriam, this guitar in its principle are honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. This doesn't mean we must be absolutely honest, open-minded, and willing. We just have to try and press to put this next principle. As we first approach the truth, we can practice the principle of honesty by acknowledging and sharing what we do or don't believe about a more greater than ourselves. Developing our open-mindedness requires some effort, but we can practice this principle by listening to other recovery and it shows how they came to believe. For many of us, the meaning to try something new came about simply because we were so tired of our ill ways. It seems to us that because our own power wasn't sufficient to restore our sanity, perhaps something else could, if we get it. Many of us felt that insanity was too hard a word to describe our condition. However, if we take a realistic look at our actual addiction, we see that we can't be anything but safe. For the most part, our perceptions were not based in reality. We knew the world around us and the hostile environment. Some of us withdrew physically and had rituals, if any, contacting with anyone. Some of us went through the motions of life but were nothing to touch us emotionally. Either way, we ended up feeling isolated. Despite evidence to the contrary, we felt that we were in control. We ignored or didn't believe the truth that was staring us in the face. We continued to do the same things and expected the results to be different. Worst of all was the fact that we continued to use drugs. Regardless of the negative consequences we experienced, despite the warning signs that our drug use was out of control, we continued trying to justify it. All too often, the result was that we could no longer face ourselves. When we take a realistic look at our lives, there can be no doubt yet we desperately need a restoration to sanity. Regardless of our individual interpretation of the term restoration, most of us agree that for us, Changing to a point where addiction and its accompanying insanity are not controlling our lives. Being restored to sanity is a lifelong process. Individually, we experience it differently at varying stages of our recovery, but we all can see some results of this process that from the beginning of our recovery. Initially, being restored to sanity means that we no longer have to use drugs. We go to meetings rather than isolating. We call our sponsor rather than sitting alone with painful feelings. We ask for our sponsor's guidance in working with us. I hear the 
because we open our minds and try something new. Some of the living that what we try might work. After we take a few small steps toward the live and trust and see results, we how we take deeper steps. We find that we are no longer as big as if we believe. Our belief is now reinforced with our own personal experience, some of which is unexplainable. We sometimes encounter remarkable coincidences in our lives that have no rational explanation. We don't need to explain or analyze these occurrences. We can simply accept that this happen and be grateful for them. The longer we stay clean, the more evidence we become that our addiction goes much deeper than the drugs we use. Much of our problem seems to center in our search for something to make us beautiful. It is a tremendous struggle to stop relying on our own reasoning and ask for help, especially given the self-centered nature of our disease. However, we are becoming open-minded in realizing that we don't have all the answers. We begin to find some humility. We may not press the full impact of what we humble means, but our open-mindedness assures us that we have done and have begun to demonstrate this valuable quality. Our community and open-mindedness make us teachable. We allow others to share what has brought for them. This takes humility, for we must let go of our things about how we may appear to others. Some of the smoothest suggestions we may receive from other things are to attend meetings, ask for help, pray, and work the steps. Our experience has shown us that believe in a higher power leads us to a recovery in narcotics anonymous. People tend to believe what they believe, and our newfound belief calls on us to leave the program. No matter what we choose for our personal higher power, we come to believe that now works. We live what we believe by continuing on our path of recovery and working the 12 steps to the best of our ability. Even after yesterday, when we have been working a program on recovery and seeking change, we may at times experience periods when that seems meaningless. We may experience a sense of alienation too painful to ignore. At such times, we may find ourselves moving away from sanity, not for it. We may begin to question our commitment to recovery. We can become obsessed with self-respecting facts. We may feel an urge to fall back on what seems easier, the familiar voice of our addiction. During these times, we need to renew our commitment to recovery. We trust that we are undergoing a fundamental transformation, even though we may. She said, not yet understand its full implication for our lives.
We might wonder why we need to make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of the God of our understanding. Or we may wonder what will happen to us if we place ourselves in God's care. We may fear that we won't be happy with what our lives will be like after working this step. When we trust that there is growth in taking action despite our fear or uncertainty, we are able to work step three. Even though we do not know how our lives will change as we work this step, we can learn to trust that our higher power will care for us better than we could. The third step is our commitment to our own emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. What began in the second step is belief in a higher power can become a fuller relationship with a God of our understanding in step three. The decision that we make by working this step, and the relationship that results, will revolutionize our existence. This decision is easier to make than to live by. We can easily lapse into old behavior. It takes determination, time, and courage to change. Because we're not perfect, we simply continue to reaffirm our decision on a regular basis and then do the very best we can to live by it. Complete and unconditional surrender of our will and our lives is an ideal we strive to fulfill. Although we don't become perfect, we do make a profound change by working this step. We are making a serious effort to live differently than we have in the past. From now on, we are going to be practicing this decision, and the way we relate to the world around us can change radically as a result. In working step 3, we begin to learn how to stop struggling. We learn to let go and trust the God of our understanding. If we take time to think and seek direction before acting, we no longer have to run on our own self-centered will. Turning our will and our lives over to the care of our 15. Higher power provides a solution to the problems created by a life based in self-will, resentment, and control. The spiritual principles we are practicing will guide us, not just in the third step but throughout our recovery. The first three steps provide us with the solid spiritual foundation we will need to work the rest of the steps. We keep our initial surrender alive by actively practicing the faith and willingness required to work the third step. In other words, We've admitted our powerlessness and inability to manage our own lives. We've come to believe, now we need to surrender to the care of the God of our understanding. We may find the willingness to work the third step by remembering where we came from and believing that where we are going is certain to be quite different. Though we don't know what this difference will entail, we know that it is sure to be better than what we've had in the past. We rely on our faith and believe that this decision is one of the best decisions we've ever made. Turning our will and our lives over to the care of the God of our understanding is a tremendous decision. We may very well wonder exactly how we are supposed to put this decision into practice. Because our individual beliefs about a power greater than ourselves vary, there is no uniform way to put our decision into action. However, we have found some ways we all can use to find a personal understanding of the third step. One is to continue our efforts to develop a personal relationship with the God of our understanding. Another is to give up our efforts at controlling everything around us. We relax our grip on the burdens we've been carrying and turn them over to the care of a higher power. Yet another way we can practice our third step decision is to continue with our recovery by working the remainder of the steps. 
Our sponsor will guide us in a...